Here. Here you go. Old year, new year, doesn't make a lick of difference. When God measures a man, he puts his tape around the heart instead of the head. That's a good way to start and finish a year. All right? And like I said, I don't know who this guy is, but he must have been smarter than everybody in a pop. So. All right. Where are we at, boss? Let's pray and we'll start going. Oh, four. 234. Okay. Verse 25. 234. Yeah. 234. Yes, sir. 234. Verse 325. Oh, wait. We're really scrambling things up the last day of the year, aren't we? Let's pray and then we'll get started. Thank you, Lord, for today. We appreciate the fact that we can come and study your word. Pray that you just be in all our hearts and our minds and our prayers as we try to determine where you would like us to study and how we can not be an impediment to what's going on. Pray that you just watch over all the ones that aren't here, Lord. Just protect them and bring them back to us safely. Be with the ones that are here that have taken time out of their schedule just to be here. That you would bless their lives during the course of what's going on. And as we study today, Lord, I pray that it's information that is useful to us as we leave this room. And that when we do, we do so in such a fashion that people see you and not us in every way, shape, and form. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Um, I put some things on the prayer list there just so you know um, about the class and all that kind of junk. But I also put on there, Mom is in Courtney Springs now. Um, she is physically better. Mentally, she does not know where she is. She, she still thinks I'm working on getting her into Courtney Springs. So that's a good thing. So um, pray this Tuesday we have a meeting, and it's kind of like a planning thing as to where you go from there. And the fact that she's in rehab, they can probably transition her into assisted living. I do not think she will be going home. I don't think she can see as well as she could. I don't think she definitely can't feed herself. She can't move very well. And she has very few conversations in reality. Okay. She thinks I'm having affairs with all the nurses. I don't know if I have time, but... We're the good looking ones. Anyway, it's just one of those type of situations. So just keep her in your prayer. She's, she's doing well other than that, but uh, so, just like all the rest of the family, we have, we have the same wrestling match going on. Keep them in your prayers because got, they've got four of them. I only have one. No, we have five. Oh, you have Don't five? forget the dog. Oh, the dog. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't realize that. He's the oldest of them all. I'm sorry, sir. So, at any rate, I just, just, so you know, just so you know what's going on. So, all right. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take off then. So we can start with verse 325 on page 234. Okay. When, uh, whom God set forth as propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because of his forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were previously committed. Well, that's a bunch of high words. Do you have another one? I think I do. Do it in that one. Hang on, let me check. You have to have a stash. Since God, in reality, doesn't ever sweep anything under the rug, that comment might be a little bit of explanation. Ah, yeah. About what he says he passed them over. He never sweeps anything. Well, it doesn't. Yeah, but you have to understand. He's he knows what's going on, so he's allowed to do whatever he's allowed to do. And he basically, yes, he did pass them over. He swept sin under the rug. Uh no. I think he put it in a closet. And, and the reason that he put it in a closet was. He had a program that was coming down the pike that was going to take care of every one of those sins, and until that happened, he did not. He's not going to hold somebody accountable for something that has not happened yet. Let me ask you from this direction. Then. Okay. The ceremony once a year. Mm -hmm. the, the Jewish people who you're dealing with mm -hmm. um, took care of didn't didn't take away their sins, but rolled it over. Would that have been um, the yeah, you could say roll it over. I, I mean, really, it isn't even that. I would say it brings it back to memory. Once a year, what has taken place prior to that? Knowing that only in another year you're going to have to do the exact same thing. So 
Uh, how many of you get tired eating every day? <laughs> Excuse me? Not yet. Oh, okay. The reason I say that is, is because I, I notice there's times when I just don't feel like cooking. Why? Because it's something I have to do all the time, and I'm reminded of it all the time. I cook. And I, <laughs> it's not an imputing of you. I'm talking about just the way I are. Bob, okay. you are, uh, and, you're actually a pretty good teacher. I wish you quit doing that. I'd what? like to keep you. <laughs> yeah, quit eating. Yeah. No, here's the deal. What I'm saying is you get tired of doing things. Well, the same thing. Oh, God, we got to go to the high priest this year and get our sins absolved again. And then we're going to do it again next year. We're going to do it again next year. We're going to do it again. And you just get, it just gets to be rote. Yeah. You don't pay any attention to it. You do it because you have to do it. Well, that plan was set into motion because he knew eventually there would be the real thing. And when the real thing showed up, that would be absolving all of those other ones that they did. And you have to understand, there is nobody on planet Earth short of Moses, Abraham, maybe Isaac every now and again when he was young, and Joseph that had a handle on what the Lord had done with their sins. They were the ones that grasped that he had imputed to them some kind of righteousness that was beneficial to them. Hence, they could be comfortable in him. What did David say over and over and over again about his salvation situation? Don't take it away from me. Why did he say that? He had no security. No, but he also kept saying also at the same time, your mercy endureth forever. Sure. But it sure didn't seem to work in his head, did it? Okay. That's what I'm saying. So until you're indwelled with something, you don't always have that that capability. So with what he's saying here, he said he's set, setting forth a propitiation. He's setting forward a payment plan. Okay? The payment plan is set up. Jews don't have a clue about it. All they, they can talk about it, they can read about it, they can prophesy about it, but they don't have a hand on <coughs> it. But it is already set up. Alright? And it says, and it took faith to do that. Everybody likes to tell you there's no faith in the Old Testament. That's who? The fact that Abraham picked up his tent from Ur of the Chaldees and packed it out and left was the biggest indication of somebody having faith in something that he didn't know a thing about that you could possibly get your hands wrapped around. And the fact that God in the Bible said that he reckoned. His sure. And he said that of several people. He said he reckoned it unto them righteousness. And that's what they're talking about here, okay? And when it's talking about whom here, Christ is the one that set forth these things. And it says, it's a verb of action to display publicly in the middle voice. What does that mean? You have to have a response to what God says when it comes to propitiation. People that don't believe Christ died on the cross for them cannot benefit from Christ dying on the cross from them. In any way, shape, or form. There is not an individual in here that would say Christ didn't die for you. Why? Can you prove it? Well, because the Bible says that God is not willing that any should well, perish. You're just going on words. Why? Yeah, but it's fixed, it's just words. Awesome. What makes it what makes the transition from words to me banking my whole ever loving life on it? By the action of trusting. Faith. 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 Okay? This is what he's talking about. Through faith, something in you has transformed. And that ability to have faith is not something you can generate yourself <coughs> that is internally generated. It's a gift. Is that making sense? Does that make yeah. sense? So what I'm saying is that's what they're saying through this stuff. Now, and it says pro. It says, so the, all, this, all this faith stuff was set up before you even had to tag it. All right? Now, and it says also, it says the place, and the cross is, is the place where we're talking about. So what they're doing with all of these things is, that's why I said, here's the cross. Oh. I got something here for one left somewhere. Oh. And look. There's, there's down, a down on the table. Down on the table. Your papers. Oh, thank you. Blind guy. Okay. 
There's the cross. All right. Got over here. And you got over here. This is Old Testament. That's not the way they write it down. They write it down as if it's over here. Everybody in the Old Testament had to have a handle on this in some fashion. This was done. Why does it say it was done? Because it was all done back here at that big table when everything was dealt with. You know when? How many times God looked up and he could see the cross? Every time. Every time God does something, he can see the cross. Whether he's, he never has to look back at it, he never has to look forward to it, he looks at it. And that's why when, he's, when they talk about this being done, it's done. Nobody can argue with it. And that's why with all of these things that are taking place on the cross, constant of errors covers three hours. So all of this <laughs> took three hours right here. So all the people in the Old Testament, they all were waiting for this three-hour closet cleaning. Same with the guy that was hanging on the cross. He was waiting for the same three hours to be up. Why? Because it was already done. It just had to be. It just had to be obtained. It just had to be used. Yes. When you when you overlay that picture with the tabernacle or mm -hmm. and everything, so the three hours is like the holy of holies. So it's where it the sacrifice took place. Or Correct. Where the where the offering took place, but the actual act of you know forgiveness of sins and all that stuff was done outside mm -hmm. of the the tabernacle itself. Yep. And the labor and all that. Yep. All of this stuff here was all the junk that was out here until it got inside here and the blood was sprinkled on that mercy seat. And I told you again and again and again, what did it do? She sprinkled on the mercy seat. What was inside the ark? Tablets. Tablets. Aaron's staff. Aaron's staff. Butted. Right. And then a and a loaf of bread. And a piece of manna was in here. What was he covering? What was what did the tablets have to do? He said, I'm taking care of the law. What's he take care of with the rod? Humans. And they're not listening. <laughs> and what's he talking about with the manna? I am sustaining you no matter what. And he said, and you didn't even like the way I sustained you. But he said, I died for all of that, even though you guys aren't worth spit. I'm dying for you. But from man's perspective, the propitiation had to be done every year, right? Correct. But, but from God's perspective, it's already done. That's Correct. Exactly. And the thing of it is, is what does, why is that? It's from memory, 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 memory. Don't ever forget that every year you have to take your lamb. You, they never forgot. They got complacent. They sure you would. Ah, eh, you know my, my, you know I got a bum leg on my lamb. Well, Don't take it there because it's not worth it. When your mind drifts away sure. from God, you don't look at God's arrangements as important. No, correct. And you start and that's looking why, only at the burden of doing things. Sure. And that's why they're always having, why the nation of Israel always was having a problem with stuff. Because they were always wandering, you know, and if you end up marrying up into another race and another gender, another this and the other, everything gets screwed up. But this doesn't change. No. It always stays the same. And he tells them that. And he said all of these things through his blood, the demonstration of his righteousness. And why does he talk about that? Here's the talks about propitiation and all that. <coughs> Here it is. Satisfaction or appeasement of the justice of God, synonyms, expiation, mercy seat, Jesus displayed as the mercy seat. You realize that that's what Christ is? He is the mercy seat. He is the reason that blood was involved with his cross work, why he had blood on his wrist, why he had blood on his feet, why they poked a hole in his side, why they mashed that thing. There was blood, and what was it doing? It was... The blood was doing what? Trickling down over what? The mercy seat. But it wasn't a lot. It no, heck no. It, no, it, it wasn't. Lot come out of the hands of it the did seat. not have to be a lot. So it, it has to be more symbolic. It is, than, it, than, it, it is exceedingly symbolic, except for the fact that he gave his life. 
That's what took it from the transition of being a symbol, which they all recognized, okay, to being reality, which is what they, they had to grow to learn. Jews especially had a hard time with it. Gentiles, not so much. They knew they were out in the woodshed no matter what, and this was an opportunity for them to be part of the package deal. But that's one of the nice things about it. But it was, it was definitely, it was symbolic. His cross work was symbolic. That's why he, everything that took place was not taking place in front of anybody. <coughs> um, there's a couple of artists that have put out pictures of Christ on the cross with the evil and the sins that were coming, you know how they come zooming in on him type of... Um, Joseph Prince did the video where he's on the cross and he has the, the clouds swirling and it all dumps down. Yes, yes. Um, did anybody see Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's a good art movie. Okay, here's the deal. You remember what he told her when, when she was tied to the post with him and they were popping the top on the ark? Don't you? Don't look. Close your eyes. What happened after that? All kinds of evil was doing, is just swirling around all kinds of spirits and everything. That's the type of thing that they, they give you an indication of what took place at Christ on the cross. I cannot imagine a full blown attack on an individual hanging on a block of wood and having every sin that was ever committed past, present, and future being poured into that body at one instant. I cannot, it's beyond my, my comprehension. And in doing so, he took it all. Okay? And at the very end, he still had the sanity and the, and the, and the, and the lucid mind to say what? It is finished. So what was finished? The program that they had put together for propitiation was now at the very last instance of this three hours, it was being culminated and being culminated in such a fashion that he could comfortably say the wrath of God had been propitiated, that nobody that would believe in what I did here on this cross would ever have to endure any of that in any way, shape, or form, which is what really ticks me off about these people that think you can get saved and you have no security and that you're going to go through part of the tribulation. I would like to kick them right into next week. Why would he tell everybody I did it and then say, oh, by the way, there's going to be another three and a half years you're going to get your butt kicked. Well, the Bible says that we are not the children of Israel. I know, but they bozos. They read all kinds of weird words and stuff. Me, I get so you, sick of it. Let me ask you a quick question. I, I understand Rejection by his people. There, there's layers of what was put on him. I understand. Yes, sir. I also understand the torture, the beatings, and everything, of which the cross was the last part of that torture to death. Correct. I, and that's bad enough. That was put on him. Correct. I also understand that all of our sins was already was laid on him. Correct. And at that point, I already understand. On top of that, that his father looked completely away from him because Correct. he can't look at sin. Um, but since Sin is darkness, mm -hmm. and Satan and his minions were cast out, and they had permission to go wherever there's darkness. They live in darkness. Mm -hmm. The sin that was laid on Christ mm -hmm. was darkness, and didn't that give his, Satan and his demons permission to try to attack him because he represented darkness with the sins on him, um, and it made an onslaught on him on top of his other punishments? That's very possible. I mean, I don't read too many verses that say that anywhere. I know. I think they were probably just <laughs> enough being happy and you know, killing the Christ. Well, when you put the things in this world together and you realize right. that sin is darkness <coughs> and sure. Satan has permission from God to go wherever there's darkness. Yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing you can remember. You remember what they call Christ? One of the terms they use for Christ is son of light. Remember that? Okay? I want you to understand something. Do you think in any of this, because you have to understand, he was still he was still deity at the same time. Mm -hmm. There was still a pile of light in that guy. 
all the darkness that was thrown in him, it did not overwhelm him. Oh, so, no, I understand that. I just so, meant that because right, there's darkness, here's what, they tried to attack. Right, but what you have to understand is no matter what was going on here, it didn't, it didn't detract from that at no. all. It couldn't. All right? And the fact, that it, the fact that it surrounded him, you could probably call it, you know, put a, put a capsule. Um, one time I did a, a Sunday school thing where everybody could come in and there were black balloons everywhere. And that, but the problem is, I went around and popped the black balloons and every balloon had a red balloon in it. Had a A red balloon in it. Oh. Why? Because that's how Christ was on the cross. It looked like everything was gloomy and bad and everything was vicious, but the problem is it was just a, a, a casing. And the casing inside had Christ. And the moment he said it is finished, pop, that thing got popped. And the light that was supposed to shine, shined. Where did it shine first? He went right down to the big boys downstairs and said, oh, by the way, I'm here. And I'm taking all of these folks with me and you guys get to be by yourself. I'll deal with you later. So he never, ever, ever, ever had a problem with any of that. That's, that's the problem. Our minds can't tackle half of the stuff that took place on that cross. It would be phenomenal if you had a mindset that you could do it, but I it didn't. didn't mean to imply. No, no, no. The dark, that the right. God, see, that Christ right. used the darkness. I mean, <laughs> right. Because even in his life, Satan tried to attack him through sure. darkness, and Christ always rejected it. I didn't mean that. But it's the same. I meant that that was an, another onslaught. Oh, shut on yeah. I don't else. doubt that for a minute. I'm sure they hammered him the whole time he was hanging on the cross. That's and the problem is, once it was all over, then they all went down to the you know local lodge, and they had a couple of bruskies and were just happier than pigs and slop because they had nailed the, the Christ to, to the cross. Yeah. The only problem is, you know, they, they were just a little premature. All right? So, but that's basically what it's talking about. Propitiation <laughs> through faith. Not an article. Emphasis on qualitative aspect of a noun rather than its identity. Faith is an object. It's Christ. So what we're talking about here is the propitiation and the faith involved had nothing to do for anything except Christ. All right? Anytime you use the word faith, you better use the word Christ. Because that's what your faith is in. You have to have an object for your faith. Right. Nothing can supplant Christ as the object of your faith. Why do you have faith that you can do something? Because Christ is in me, and he says that I can do all things through him. My grace is sufficient for you. Bingo. Every time, it's going to be Christ-centered. That's where your faith is centered. That's what they're talking about. Now, here, I put a little thing down here with the word faith. And it says, faith never subtracts from the efficacious work of Christ. All right, what's the efficacious work? Um, the effective work. Yeah, the effective, so what do you call the excellent? Excellent work. For salvation. Okay. That's the efficacious work. What it amounts to is, is him... Common grace is everywhere. Holy Spirit's wandering around, bumping into people and says, oh, by the way, I'm going to run into Doug today and I'm going to introduce him to me and let's see what he says. He says yes, so now he's gone from common grace, now he's efficacious grace. He automatically has salvation, now he's got 39 things on his list, now he's got a whole new program to work, now he's got a whole lot of learning to do, he's got a whole lot of faith to build up, he's got a whole lot of education to do, he's got a whole lot of maturing to do, and all of those things take place in Christ, and he said, I never stop doing those. You might get lazy, but I don't. And when you get lazy, most of the time, I'm going to put a couple of sand spurs under your seat. <coughs> and when you sit down, you're going to go, oh, that's okay. I didn't want to sit there that long anyway. Why? Because he needs you to grow. He knows what he put up with on the cross. He doesn't want you to have to put up with any of that stuff. So he gets you to educate yourself, grow up a little bit faster, and get a little bit further ahead of the curve so that you're ready for this nonsense when it shows up. Nothing can be added to faith in Christ with appropriate salvation. No substitute for faith in Christ. Nothing. Don't depend on your own <laughs> skills. Don't depend on your own knowledge. Hence that up there. Don't depend on people. Don't depend on your church. Don't depend on anything. Depend on Christ and that book you got parked on your lap. Because it's all about Him doing. Any correct. Any other consideration <laughs> correct, is correct, us correct. doing and we can't be righteous <laughs> in that we do. But it has to be 
all about him. Every bit of it. Passive and minute. Okay? There's your word for faith. It's either passive or it's middle. It's never, ever, 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 ever you. You can be involved in it. You can be used of it. But you can't do it on your own. Okay? Middle voice means you're involved in Jesus Christ somehow. Now, how would that be? You know what? Every time I read my Bible, and every time I learn another verse, every time I commit another part of Scripture to my mind, I've taken something that is passive and turned it into a middle because I now have it in my head and I can use it the next time I need it. Okay? I can sit there and read my Bible and not do anything and then I'm useless. The only reason you should have a, a, a <coughs> knowledge of the Bible is to function correctly in the world. That's what James said. No other reason. Okay? Don't be a hearer only, but a yeah. doer. Yeah, that's, a that's hearer, the deal. If you're a hearer and not a doer, then you're a foolish man. Well, that's, you know, those are grumpy words, but that's the way it flies. And the thing of it is, is he's just telling you that nicely every now and again. Every now and again, he puts a couple of exclamation points with it. This is. And then put the, here's the definition of propitiation, okay? And it's kind of helped a little bit is the Godward side of work of Christ in salvation, this propitiation, all right? In the work of Christ on the cross that deals with the integrity of God. And that means satisfaction. Justice of God judges our sins as Christ was bearing them on the cross. And the integrity of God is satisfied with that judgment. Now the fact that we know that he was satisfied with that judgment means that the righteousness that's imputed to you at salvation, which is Christ's righteousness, makes it possible for him to interact with you all the time because he never sees you. He sees the righteousness that you accepted with your faith in Christ. And that's why when people do things that they know that are wrong and they feel guilty, it needs to be a very fleeting thing or a non-existent thing. It needs to be an identification process and you need to stop and you need to tell him, you died for that. There should be no guilt in this because you only died for it. And I'm going to go on now. I'm going to learn from it. And I'm not going to play in that field anymore. That's how you benefit from this stuff. Guilt will slow you down something fierce. Um, how, can I, how can I put this? I, I'm, anybody... Farm raised to some. Okay. When you had animals that you had to put down, did you ever have them? Chickens, whatever. And did somebody on the farm put them down? My dad. Okay. Did you remember him wandering around like this after he did it? He usually said, No, get the crock pot out. We got another one. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are certain things in life that, that need to be addressed that way, okay? And when, when it comes to, to you making a mistake and, and feeling that you, you, you did something wrong, that's wonderful. I accept it for what it is. Do it and then go on from it and don't put any tags with it. I take my, when my dogs wear out, okay, my dogs, uh, I've had them, I don't know how many over the years, but when they wear out, I go dig a hole out back. I wrap them in there. I give them a good meal. All right? And I wrap them up in their blanket because they might be dying from heartworms or they're suffering immeasurably or whatever. And I go out there and I put them down and I cover their heads up and I, put, and I shut them down. Okay? I don't feel guilty about it. Why? I am doing what I feel is necessary to get a situation resolved to the benefit of everybody involved. The dog doesn't mind. The last person they saw was me, the one that took care of them for their whole life, the one that threw the ball for them, the one that took them hunting, the one that picked them up out of the duck boat, the one, all of these things. These are all things that are in my head, and I, but when I put them down, I put them down because it's time to put them down. 
Well, when you do sin, it's the same thing. You did it, okay? Don't wrestle with it. Call it what it is. You made a mistake. You sinned. You did something that Christ died for. Accept the forgiveness of it and go on with it. That way you don't get all caught up in all the baggage that goes with it. And the next thing you know, if you keep heaping these things in your backpack, by the time you get five years down your road, you are just dragging with garbage that should have been resolved a long time ago. By not doing that, do you not diminish what he died for? Exactly. Big time. <clears throat> Very big yeah. time. You're saying, well, I, I, you know, I, I know you died for it, but I just, I don't think I can really get rid of it. Well, that's not what he said. So how, that's a big thing. How are people able to function when they think you don't have to do that, though? Um, people that think you don't have to confess your sins, you're already right. Well, that's a, tough, that's a tough scenario nowadays when they're peddling that stuff right now. But it goes away. It comes in cycles. There'll be other times when people will, next thing you know, they'll be out in the streets crying because of it. But that's not what it says either. It says you take this to your high priest. Who's your high priest? The guy sitting next to Christ, next to God in the, in, in the Holy of Holies. And he's the one that you talk to. Why? Because he's the one that goes right to God. You don't need any of this extracurricular nonsense. You don't need to confess to your neighbors. You don't need to confess to your friends. You don't need to confess to anybody. You confess to Jesus Christ and tell God what's taking place. And then the show's over. You don't mention it again. But there's the people that think you don't have to confess. Well, those people are going to be dreadfully upset somewhere Can they still grow in Christ? If they're, if there's uh, all you're doing, all you're doing is, is snicking the, the pipeline, whatever the feeding tube is coming down from, from the Lord, you're just you're just clinching it off because he said, I can't work with you. You're not you're you're self-righteous. I'm sorry, I can't deal with that. I won't deal with that. So basically you just end up learning the same things over and over again. Sure you do. Heck yeah. That's what you know. Yeah, so I you used to remember what go ahead. Go say I used to remember there were there were like two or three ladies in the church, probably 15, 20 years ago, even more maybe by now, that used to go up front every week. She would, they were at the altar every week, just pouring their heart out. I thought, man, I tell you what, they must be living the life of disgust. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how you could be that that miserable every living Sunday. Well, eventually somebody took them aside, and, and I ended up being a deacon during that time at one time, back in eighty something. And uh, I got one of them as a as a as a what do you, what do you call them? You take them in the room in the back. A mentor. A mentor, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I got the counselor. Counselor. I was a counselor. Can you imagine that? <laughs> okay. At any rate, I got to take one of these back, and, and the lady said, and I said, yeah, ma'am, I said, and I said, you know, I'm, the diplomacy hadn't evolved like it has. I'm so diplomatic now. <laughs> I said, by the way, ma'am, um, what the flip are you doing all week that you got to come up here every week? And she, she kind of got big eyes and looked at me, and she said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, I mean, Christ died on the cross for all your sins, but you're up here like you're finding a bunch of new ones every week. And she said, well, no, I, I, I just don't feel comfortable because of what I'm doing. I said, well, what are you doing it for? And she said, well, did that not make sense? I said, what are you doing it for? Well, it's a habit. Oh. I said, so Christ <coughs> didn't die for your habits. He only died for your sins. Well, yeah, I guess that's, that's probably what I'm saying. I said, well, if you could find a verse for me that says that, I would really appreciate that. So she sat there for a couple minutes, look. She couldn't. I said, do me a favor. Whoever taught you that garbage, don't listen to them anymore. And go with this verse right here in, in 8.1 where it tells you, you are now, you know, there is no condemnation in those that are in Christ Jesus. I said, because he doesn't do that. Only you can do that. And he said, well, okay. I've never heard from, from somebody who's been to church now as long as I have, I've never heard that before. So somebody didn't teach her what you do with your salvation. So from that point on, I don't remember seeing her up front anymore. And it was a while later, she came back through one time and we were having a meeting or something. And she stood up in, in the meeting and she said, you know, two years ago, somebody told me something in that room back there that changed my life. Uh, 
Beth Cheese. Here we go. And she said, I would like to thank this church for raising an individual that actually knows what that book says. And I tell you what, I had some of the most phenomenal Sunday school teachers in this church that you could possibly ever, ever put your, put your hats on. And they taught me to take that word literally. But it says something, by God, it says it for a reason. It doesn't say it so you can feel good. And salvation will make you feel good, but you self-cleaning your house doesn't always feel good. And they realized that, and they were, they were, she was very gracious about it. So all I'm telling you is make sure the book says something before any of this stuff takes place. Your faith is something that you're going to go through and you're going to grow with. Now, and when it talks about Godward side of the work, God does everything that Christ had to do. Now, on the next page over, it said, <clears throat> when you've got salvation, it frees the justice of God to give anyone who believes in Christ immediately one half of God's integrity. All right? We told you that a bazillion ever loving times. You are now a big plus R. Okay? That's why God can contact you. That's why He can bless you. That's why He can interact in your life because you are a plus R. You have Christ, so you now have that righteousness. So the half you said was the other half? The other half is integrity. The justice part of it. Okay? So when you got integrity, you got justice and you got righteousness. The justice, keep an eye on righteousness, and righteousness keeps an eye on justice. But the justice part is not how we interact with God, it's His righteousness. So when he shoves you full of righteousness, you are now able to study your Bible. That's why Scott's coming up with all kinds of odd questions about where in the world your heart is in all of these situational programs that take place in the Bible. Why can you think this and not that? Why can you be here and not there? Because the Holy Spirit is in there now, and the Holy Spirit is going to lead him into all truth. doesn't stop the questions. It gives you a comfort in going through the questions, even though they're, they're very, very uh, frustrating. Yes, very. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. He comes across the same kind of stuff I do when I see stuff, and I say, what the flip did it say that for? And then you go scouting around, and you try to put it together. Well, some of this may not be. We may go into eternity being frustrated. Okay. Because we try to go to minds greater than us trying to get these answers, but sometimes they don't even have the answers. That well, doesn't mean I you, stop. How do you reconcile that with the Holy Spirit leading us into all truth? Well, He leads you into all the truth you need. That's the problem. <laughs> you know, that's that's where the rest of the match can fall apart. Because you know, He says, "Well, I, you know, Scott's saying, well, thank God, Lord, I got to have this." He said, "No, I don't think you need it right now." But he'll dance you around and he'll give you tons of information and no telling what he'll teach you from it. But then very well, he very well may lay it out for you eventually and then you come to this epiphany. I did that when it came to um, Blake. When Blake was here. Remember Blake and Susanna, that bouncing little thing that was here the last time? Okay. Um, Blake didn't believe in, in um, security and, and the fact that you, know, you were secure in Christ. I said, well, okay, this is when I was studying stuff about... The fact that Christ said one thing. I'm going to leave, and if I leave, I'm going to do what? I'm going to send somebody in my stead. I will never leave you unattended. Okay? Henceforth, he's telling you, I'm leaving. The Holy Spirit's going to show up. You're going to know him because I told you he's coming. Okay? Uh, I found in myself <laughs> you're talking about and the answer to his question I don't have knowledge in Hebrew. I don't have knowledge in Greek. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't stop no. the Spirit mm -hmm. because He is the master of all media and He Correct. knows what I'm going to come in contact with. Correct. And it's Him teaching. Exactly. So my studying the Word, <laughs> Him blessing it, my hearing the truth in Sunday school and in preaching and other, mm -hmm. other uh, uh, media that He's guiding me in. I learn what he wants me to know, even though I don't have the formal schooling mm -hmm. that many others do. Because it's him doing it, and he's responsible, and he causes me to listen. That's the way it's supposed to be. Exactly. The Holy Spirit can teach you no matter what. 
Um, there are no spiritual idiots in the Holy Spirit. Okay, just so you know. Um, how many of you have college educations? A bunch of you do. I don't. I had some. I had a little bit of early. It stunk. I hated it. But anyway, I don't have it, but it didn't impede me from learning. Okay? So you guys have good brains, and mine doesn't always work that great. Okay? So coming. Okay, here's the deal. This is what he said. This is, he said, I'm leaving, so the Holy Spirit's coming. Blake couldn't get a handle on that. So I said, okay, Blake, let me take you to Thessalonians. It says there's going to be a program going on back here when the, when the end times come on, and one thing's going to happen. He says, I'm going to do one thing before the son of perdition can be exposed. I am going to pull the comforter out. Okay? And he said, well, you know, what's that mean? I said, well, here's the comforter over here coming, and here's the comforter over here leaving. You ain't going to be here for none of this stuff, but because he said, I'll never leave you unattended. And he just told you in Thessalonians 1 9, he said, uh, You're going to be left. He said, When I'm coming, this guy's going to go, and the son of perdition will be exposed. I think it's Thessalonians. What is it? Somewhere in Thessalonians. Donnie's not here, so I don't have all my. So, but at any rate, he, I told him that, and from that point on, he was comfortable with the fact that he wasn't going to have to go through the tribulation, and that he was going to have some security in the fact that he knew Jesus Christ. Because people don't teach the simple stuff anymore. They, they dance around it too much trying to be fancy. Well, it's not necessary to do that, all right? Yeah, Go. Moving on. <clears throat> Don't you think that we will have questions even in heaven when we get there? Um, that is a big, that's a big, uh, my thing is the minute I'm gone, okay, I'm going to be taken from corruptible to incorruptible. And in doing so, I'm going to have, what's it say in one of the verses that you look into the mirror dimly? You don't see what's really available. Okay, so I'm thinking that the moment I bolt out of here, I'm going to get the other 90% of my brain that's just out there in la la land right now. It's going to be filled with stuff. And I'm hoping it's filled with all the questions like where the dinosaurs were, you know, that kind of stuff. All the important questions. No, just, you know, see, I'm just, that's just the way my mind works anyway. I'm kind of of the mind that you're going to get some of those questions answered because now I'm going to have the full mind of Christ, not a quality of that mind. Okay, right now, walking planet Earth, you have a quality of the mind of Christ, which gives you the ability to study your Bible and to have discernment and things like that. But when I get the mind of Christ and have a, 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 a mind that's not corrupted by sin, I think there's going to be a whole lot more. I could probably spend a, a probably, I don't know, a couple of eons just sitting in a corner like this, letting all that stuff travel through, you know, your memories. So I don't know. I... I, I, I I can't find anything like that, but I, I, I'm just of the opinion that he's going to really, I've been faithful to him, he's going to be faithful to me to answer all these questions. He's, he's still God. Yes. And I'm not. <laughs> oh, God. What'd you do? What happened? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming like a landslide. <laughs> well, you're walking home. <laughs> but anyway, all I'm saying is that when it comes to that kind of stuff, I, I'm of the mindset that you're going to get a lot more in this in this than you ever gave. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping. So yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, uh, Jesus is saying that uh, when, like when we go to we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the, the former things gonna be passed away. It won't even enter our minds anymore. The things that was on earth here. Right. But there's all kinds. Of, well, I hope so. Well, I hope they pass away, but I hope they pass into knowledge. I hope they're just not gone. My thing is, he gave. This is a training ground. I know. I mean, he tells you that. I'm prepping you for eternity here. I hope that everything I learned here scripturally is not going to go away. 
And his scriptures tell me a lot about the foundations of the world, tell me about the pyramids, tell me about the, the stars in the sky. All of that stuff is beneficial. And that word, it tells you again and again, even in eternity does not pass away. So his word is going to go on forever. Okay, so if his word's got it in there somehow, I want to know about it. And he talks about Leviathans and all kinds of stuff in Job, all these different things he talks the only problem is I don't think it's probably a dinosaur. I don't think a dinosaur has a squiggle tail. But anyway, there's a lot of things in there that you can read that I hopefully will be be expounded upon as, as we get as we get more. Yeah, but of our I minds. think we're going to need classes. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Bobby, I have a good question. Yes, sir. Uh -oh. In this time line, when we meet. <coughs> Where along that line, um, and, and, and where is it going to show up amongst the various things that are mentioned, is going to be the point when he wipes away all tears. That would be at the, I, I can tell you that specifically. That would be when he comes. Immediately that we enter into heaven? No, 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 no. This is a very important question. It is a very important question. Now let me tell you something. The reason I know that is not true, that immediately when you enter heaven is because if you pay attention to all those martyrs that are under the table, they're all crying and weeping and saying, when are you going to avenge our blood? Right. So all that takes place when you see him come back at the end of time, and I'm talking time, millennial time, when he comes back and whoops Satan for the final time, then there will be no more tears. Okay. okay and, and you have to understand, that's... And he's judged all things. He judges all things. Okay, so then, then things get wiped clean, then a period of time after that, you're going to find that everything is revamped. Yeah. Okay. And the earth will be revamped by fire. Okay. So, like I said, there's a truckload of things that people get the, the, the timetables off on. So you have to be careful when people are teaching that kind of stuff. I know. So. It, it, even me, it worries me a little bit because, and like everybody else, I've got a lot of regrets too. Right. And there's been a lot of pain in my life. Sure. And I was wondering how long and how it would fit into the known timeline that we're told when that's going to be taken away. And, yeah. and, well, and you, I, don't, I don't think your pain is going to go through the heaven. <coughs> if I go there, and then am I going to be telling <coughs> scenes of what I could have done in somebody else's um, life and how, and how they didn't get what they need because of something I failed at? I don't, know, I don't know that that's going to be the case. I do know that he can show you all those things, but I don't know that he will do that. Why? Because at the, at the Bema seat, it is a time of blessing and a time of, of rewards and a time where you see what you didn't do, but I don't think it's going to, it's, it, you're still someplace that you really, really don't mind being. Right. And, you know, I, I don't know that it's going to be that dreadful. A lot of people want to make me see this. Right, there it yeah. is. There's very little known about it. So, Isaiah says, For behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, for the former shall not be remembered. Okay, there you go. And that, yeah, uh, that's, 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 a t that's, that's after the millennium and after everything else. The only thing that does go on is the, the scriptures itself. God's word never stops. So, you know, he's gonna, if he needs to wipe it clean, he wipes it clean with something to do. I don't, I, I, I don't have a problem with it. I, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I don't mind not being in my mind. You know? Well, that goes along with like, the question she asked. What about my unanswered questions? Right. Well, well you may not have a question by the time you get up there. Right. You know? <laughs> what, what was that question? <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah 65. There's, there's Mary Ann wandering around up in heaven with a piece of paper. <laughs> I, had a, I had a question on this paper, but thank God I can't find that paper. Yeah. 65 what? 17. So, well, that is it that she's not going to have any more questions? <laughs> no, she'll have a whole bunch for you. <laughs> so. It's just that I knew that the way things were being described in the Bible, there seemed that it was allowing me to think that for a portion mm -hmm. of time, amongst the steps of things that were going to be happening, that mm -hmm. there was going to be a time before everything was wiped away. Well, the... Yeah, not knowing the time schedule up there, not knowing how this takes place, I don't know. You know, I have had several different ways of looking at things where 
like I said, everybody that is in that was in paradise is now at the edge of heaven. They are not in the third heaven yet. They're at the edge of heaven, waiting for everybody else to show up. I tend to agree with you because so, at the time when he finished, <coughs> all right. judgment, all things right. at all levels right. are going to be judged and finalized in the accounts closed. Sure. That seems to me to be the time when Well, yeah. Christ has that all squared away and he yeah, knows when it's all going to take place and all that. So at any rate, where are we at? I'm almost out of time. Am I out of time, Ms. Heather? This salvation, okay, let me do number five real quick. The salvation adjustment to the salvation of God frees divine justice to provide blessing for the believer in salvation. At rebound, which is repentance, after reaching maturity. So your salvation takes care of your sins prior to salvation. Rebound takes care of sins after you're saved. All right? Anybody that thinks you don't sin after you're saved is an idiot. I don't know how you can spell it any different. But he paid for all everything things before, but, during, and correct, after. Correct, exactly. They're, they're all squared away, but he wants you to remember but why. They still have to happen. Because every time you, yeah, every time you remember, what do you do? You give honor to the fact that he went to the cross for right. you. Phenomenal program. And maybe that's where you're coming yeah. from before, where they say, hey, you know, I don't have to. No, you're going back and you're having that conversation. Patience. and. The remembrance of, Correct. oh yeah, you paid for everything. Correct. So maybe that is honoring him, like you it said, does. by recognizing, oh, I, I, I did mess up here. Sure. I'm sorry. Let's move forward. But it also takes care of your self-righteousness. Right. You're yes. getting, you're wiping that puppy clean every time you do that. Because other yeah. than that, you think, well, I've got some, I've got some good here of my own. I don't have to really go and clean that up this time. But that's not the case. So, all right, mark it there, boss. We'll start there next week. All right. Okay, what do we got? Anything on that clipboard, Mr. Oh, Day? Sorry. Sorry. Down, down. Okay. Okay. Real quick. Uh, I put down here for a smooth New Year's Day and everything that follows after it. Directions on how to deal with Sunday school. I put Josh on here for job issues and direction and wisdom. Julie, same thing. Millie, placement, Teresa, my sister. My family's a mess. <laughs> um, and Mary Ann's son, Jeff, health problems. Shirley Burns' sister flew in the hospital. Oh, that's right. She called me and told me that. Okay. Um, and Lois, um, Don Hartage family. Don's wife, Barbara, died 24th. Don is a co worker. That's a bummer. And Carol, friend, Bobby, she's 94, assistant living in Melbourne, sharp. As a tag, she's going blind. Pray for her situation. All right. That's enough to keep us out of trouble for a while. Yes, sir. Bobby, may I just, I okay. didn't write anything on the prayer sure. sheet today, but I don't think all of you know that Tom had been in the hospital and just a couple of days before Christmas, and he has had a pacemaker put in that we're hoping is going to take care of this lightheadedness. And okay. also, the doctor said, it had to be done when it was done because his heart was slowing up and there were even times when it has probably stopped. I don't know. And so if you would just add Tom to your sure. prayers, I would appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to lose my right arm. You know. Well then straighten up, would you? <laughs> get, on, get on pace, Tom. <laughs> All right, let's pray then. Thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for how you put it together. Thank you for all the requests we put on that piece of paper and for watching over the ones that you do continuously, Lord. Why don't you just watch over the ones that have medical problems in whatever particular situation it is and give us the, the words, the energy, or whatever the case might be to, to, to come out of the other side of it. And as we start this new year, we start it with all the grace and mercy that you can muster for us and we just accept every lick of it in Christ's name. Amen.